Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C Sharp and in this tutorial we're going to be learning about loops. Now what if you have a piece of code in which you would like to execute multiple times? Well, or in a row. Well, you don't want to copy and paste that piece of code again and again for multiple reasons. One, that's more work for you, the programmer, and two, it'll cause your file size to become larger, which in the end means your application excuse me, will run slower and your users will not like that. So let's figure out how to do this. So let's do, the reason why I want to do this with a list box is so you can see it visually in action. It doesn't have to be with a list box. It could be for any time you need to execute a certain piece of code again and again. Uh, but I just want you to see things getting added into this list box so it's more easy to see the loop in action visually. So let's go to the enter. All I have is this try catch. That's, that's all I have so far. So let's create a string. Let's call, let's say you have to type in your name for an example is equal to text input dot text and well let's figure out how to go about doing this so what are some different types of loops so the different types of loops there are include the while loop the do while loop and the for loop so these are the basic uh, standard loops that I will be showing you so let's figure out how to go about doing this so the while loop probably the easiest one you just type out while pair of parentheses then an opening curly brace and a closing curly brace. So in between these curly braces goes the code that you would like to have executed. And that code will only execute if the conditional statement, what's found within these parentheses, remains true. So there might be a certain set number of times that you might want it to execute. Let's just go for a standard, a standard, uh, or I shouldn't, I shouldn't, uh, a standard example that you'll probably find. So we'll create another variable called int i now whenever you're using a variable inside of a loop it will usually be a single character variable like i or j or k so int i is equal to zero and then here while i is less than 10 execute this piece of code list collection dot items dot add and let's add in the name our string okay so let's look at this Okay, so we have int i equals 0, while 0 is less than 10, add an item. So that looks about right, correct? No. This will actually become an infinite loop, because won't i always be equal to 0? That's true, so within our brackets, our curly braces, we'll have to add something such as i plus equals 2, or i plus equals 3, something that changes the value of i. But there's actually some assignment operators I have not shown you yet just two assignment operators there is the um, increment which is plus plus and the decrement the minus minus uh, and basically what this is the equivalent of is if you put i plus plus that is the equivalent of i plus equals one and likewise i minus minus is the equivalent of i minus equals 1. So if you only wanted to increment by 1, it, you can increment as many times as you wish, but if we just did i plus plus like this, let's see how it'll work. So I'll open this, I'll type out Adam, I click enter, and now we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So why do we get 10 if it has to be less than 10? Well that's because i started at 0 which means if you include 0, when it went 0, 1, 2, all the way till 9, that's 10 times. If I changed it to, let's say, plus equals 3, let's see how many times it comes up. Oh, whoops, didn't have anything in there. There you go, you can kind of already see, because it was blank, so 4 times, 1, 2, 3, 4. So why is that? Well, the first time it went in, it was 0, then it was 3, then it was 6, then it was 9. So that's four times that it worked. So that's pretty pretty cool, right? Uh, so now the next loop I would like to show you is the do while. Now the difference here is, I'm just going to cut this and type out the word do, and then the while goes down here. So all you do is type do, whoops, and a semicolon. This is very, very interesting. Uh, with the do while loop, not only do you type the do first, then your curly braces, then the while comes afterwards, followed by the expression, but you have to put a semicolon at the end. Never do this with any other kind of loop. 
It's the doo-wow loop. It's a rebel. This, this guy's a black sheep among the loops. Okay, so now what's the difference between the while and the do while? Well, notice how it says do, then you have the code. Which means it will always execute the code at least once, regardless of the expression right here. So if I go is greater than 10, something like that, let's see how this works. I click enter, or oops, type in Adam, enter, and it happened once, but wait a minute. I is equal to zero. Zero is not greater than ten. Well, there's your difference. It will always execute at least once. A while will check the expression first before ever doing it. But with the do while, the, the it's reading the 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 compiler is reading the code like a human being would from top to bottom. So once it hits this do, it does whatever's after it. That's what it's being told to do. So it never sees the while than the expression not yet at least. So that's why. Then the last one I want to show you is probably the most important, most commonly used one, is the for loop. Very, it's a very, very structured loop. So, um, and probably the most complicated one to remember. It's a, it's a pretty tough one to remember. It's got a lot of information in it. And we actually don't need this up here anymore either. Yep. So I wonder what will happen if we don't have that I there anymore. So this is the syntax for a for loop. You type for, followed by your expression opening curly brace, closing curly brace, just like this. Now inside here, this is big, three pieces of information go in here. The first piece of information is your uh, variable that you'll be using, so int i is equal to zero is the very first piece of information that goes in, followed by a semicolon. Then the next piece of information that goes in here is your comparison. So maybe it's i is less than, I don't know, 5. Then the next piece of information that will go in there is your increment or decrement. You could put i plus plus, you could put i plus equals 2, whatever you'd like. But I'm just going to go i plus plus. So as you can see, four loops are very structured. It has your declaration of your variable, your little uh, expression here, and increment decrement. Okay, so we'll type in list collection dot items dot add and let's see here. We could put in the name, our name. There we go. So I click save and I think it should print five times. Put down Bob. And there we go. One, two, three, four, five. Because it's while I is less than five and it, incre and it increments by only one for each iteration. And that's what it's called. Each time it goes through the loop, it's called an iteration. Now we have a whole bunch of things here. What if we want to be able to count as this thing is going up what number is associated with this bob, right? Uh, how do we go about doing this? Uh, in order to do that, see how the i keeps incrementing by one every time we go through the loop? So what we could do is put i right here plus an empty string plus then the name. Now let's see how this looks. It looks like it'll be correct, but let's see what happens. I type in, uh, I don't know, Tim. We get all these numbers next to the Tim, which is really cool, because the I keeps incrementing by one for each iteration, but it starts at zero. So what you could do is put an extra set of parentheses here about the I, and put plus one, like that. Click Save. And then if I type in, I don't know, Timmy, now it actually starts at 1. So that's a really, really cool thing that you can do. So these are the three basic loops that you can use. Um, and then these two um, increment and decrement operators I, I have now shown you. I hope this wasn't too much for you. And I'm going to show you some better examples, um, including nested loops and continuing and breaking, in the next tutorial. So I'll see you next time.